In this section, we're going to have a much closer look at what quantitative easing is. QE is an unconventional form of monetary policy. It's been used in a number of countries in the last decade or two, including Japan, the UK, USA and the EU. And it involves introduction of new money into the national money supply and it's conducted by the central bank. The central bank creates electronic money in its tills, if you like, and that is used to buy assets, which is mainly bonds from financial institutions such as insurance companies, pension funds and commercial banks. So it's buying back bonds that it previously sold in years gone by. How does it impact the economy? What is the transmission mechanism? So let's follow it through. This is like the flow chart of how QE works. So the new electronic money is created by the central bank and that's used to buy those bonds back from financial institutions and pension funds, etc. Now this increases the price of the bonds because the government wants them back now and so ends up paying more than the face value of the bond. That causes the yields to fall. So in other words, the interest rate falls. Financial institutions, institutions having sold bonds now have got more cash. They've swapped their IOUs for cash and they're sitting on a lot of cash now. In other words, there is more liquidity in the financial sector. So they've swapped these loans, these IOUs that might have five, six, seven, ten years to run for cash. So greater liquidity. This means that they will want to lend more because they want this cash to work. Sitting on cash in their accounts is not earning them anything. So they'll want to lend more to start earning interest on those loans. Lower yields also mean lower interest rates, so there is more and cheaper credit. So that means both consumption, so consumers and households will borrow more, and investment should rise within the aggregate demand formula. Investment rises because it's cheaper for firms to borrow too. In addition, as the bond or asset prices rise, this causes a positive wealth effect. So you may recall from the previous lesson that this is when the uh, value of your assets rise. So you feel wealthier. You haven't actually got any more money, but you feel wealthier. So therefore, this might induce you to spend a little bit more. The lower interest rates lead to a depreciating currency, again from the previous lesson. So we have the hot money flowing out of the economy, looking elsewhere for a higher interest rate, and that leads to a depreciation. So our section of the aggregate demand, X minus M, rises. Overall, aggregate demand should rise. So let's summarise that. Quantitative easing has a wealth effect because of lower yields or interest rates lead to higher share or bond prices. So if you're lucky enough to own shares or bonds, those have gone up in value and you will feel wealthier. You might wish to spend more. Borrowing cost effect. It lowers interest rates on long term debt, such as government bonds and mortgages. So if it's cheaper credit, then hopefully consumption will rise, investment will rise and aggregate demand should rise. Quantitative easing has a lending effect. So quantitative easing increases the liquidity of banks because they've now got all this cash instead of these IOUs. And this should encourage them to actually lend more. And, and this in turn should actually encourage spending in the economy. And last but not least, there is a currency effect. The lower interest rates has the effect, the side effect of causing the exchange rate to weaken, a depreciation, which means that we will sell more exports and we will buy less imports. So again, increasing aggregate demand. Why do we use quantitative easing? 
Well, in normal circumstances, central banks can simply reduce interest rates to boost aggregate demand and GDP. But as we saw from those graphs of the interest rates for the Bank of England, we can see since 2008, they've dropped from around 5% to 0.5%, rose briefly at 0.75% in around 2018, but now are back down at 0.1%. So in effect, interest rate as a policy for monetary policy has run out of steam. We can't actually lower them anymore. And this is what we call the liquidity trap. This is where the interest rate is so low anyway, that even if you lower it a bit more, people are unwilling or unable to borrow anymore. So we are in the liquidity trap. Mark Carney, the previous um, governor of the Bank of England in January 2020, estimated that 120 billion of quantitative easing was equivalent to cutting interest rates by around about 1%. So quite effective. However, quantitative easing is not meant to be permanent. A Treasury official likened quantitative easing to heroin. It's highly addictive, it's distortive, and with many, many unwanted side effects in the economy. So if it's not meant to be permanent, we should consider what happens when the Bank of England starts to unwind quantitative easing and reduce their holdings of those IOUs, that government debt. We would like you to write an analytical chain explaining what might happen if the QE process is reversed. Have a look back at the transmission mechanism and use that to see if you can work out what happens when we unwind QE.